Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media and Yelp. My name is Sean Walsh, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. I want to give a special shout out to Toast, our primary technology partner for our barbecue restaurants. We believe so much in smartphone storytelling because in life, in the restaurant business and in the content creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Robert Don Poo Cummins. You can find him at Don Poo Music on Instagram. Robert is the owner of Brooklyn Chop House in Times Square, 25,000 square feet restaurant in Times Square. He is a Brooklyn dumpling shop franchisor. He is an IHOP and flipped franchisee, real estate developer. Oh, and he is a legendary music business executive who has worked with Biggie Smalls, Jay-Z, P. Diddy, Mary J. Blige, Foxy Brown, just to name a few. We're so honored to have you on the show. Um, Don Poo, welcome to the show. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Thank you so, so much. So uh, my favorite random question that we start the show off is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Um, for me, obviously, I'm a kid growing up in Brooklyn. Some of the hottest concerts, some of the most exciting games, and some of the most mag mag magnetic energy has been in Madison Square Garden. That's been my venue. That's been the my, my venue of choice um, since I was watching as a kid. My dad used to take me to go see the WWF uh, wrestling matches, um, some great boxing matches, obviously some classic games, some great concerts. So that energy for me, um, as I travel around the world with other artists, that energy at Madison Square Garden, um, for me, has just been the best. So we're going to go to MSG. We're going to go to Madison Square Garden. I'm gonna Absolutely. I'm going to convince Entrepreneur. I'm going to convince Yelp. I'm going to convince Toast. I'm going to get everybody to buy in, to put on the best, literally the best hospitality and entrepreneur conference that's ever been put together. And I'm going to put you on center court. I'm going to say, Don Poo, we know your backstory. We know where you've been. Where are you going? What's your two minute drill? What are you building? Um, I come from, um, you know, a management background where I managed and, you know, it co-executive produced um, some, um, pretty well-known artists today, and they've gone on to have amazing careers. So for me, it's just building brands. It's taking my brand and um, in business, I, I started uh, di diversified into franchising, and now I've um, graduated to being a franchisor of a pretty unique concept, Brooklyn Dumpling Shop. So for me, I want to build out more, build out my brand um, actually do deals with other franchisees, give them an opportunity to own their own business, as well as friend, as well as real estate development, and go on to develop, you know, um, multiple unit residential housing um, throughout New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. So that that's what's in the future for me: real estate development and being a franchisor and helping franchisees actually own their own business and build their own company within our company. So that's, you know, that's what I would like to see in the next 10 years. That's very exciting. So we're we're all fired up. Madison Square Garden's popping. We're ready to get going. Let's go. Time, time to lay it down. Let's let let's get into the backstory for those of the of those of the people that don't know um, in the hospitality business. You were Poo growing up. How'd you become Don Poo? So my nickname was always Poo growing up as a little kid um, in Brooklyn, New York. So I got an opportunity to assist um, the management of the notorious B.I.G. I call him Biggie, um, a friend. Um, um, I was inspired by him, um, his work ethic. So we were on the road as I was assisting management. I would be on the road with him and he would he would say, hey, you're always on the phone. Like, what's up with that? Every time I turn around, like, you know, we're eating over here, we're doing this, we're playing cards, we're doing this, but you're always on the phone, like, what's up? So I'd say, um, you know, I'm just trying to do business. You know, I got this um, um, other business that I'm looking at. I'm trying to understand and learn the management business on by having on-the-job training. 
So um, he, he's, he'd say, Yo, you're, you're always on the phone. Like, you're like the Don. Your, your name is Don Poo. Like, you're like the Don, always on the phone. So he just made up this name. And then, obviously, he was just so charismatic and so funny. Um, a lot of people don't know that side of him. So he actually, um, I guess in a joke, but I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I don't know really, you know, what it means, but it's kind of cool. Don Poole, okay. Sounds like, you know, like uh, like important, but yet kind of, you know, cool and funny. So I just kept the name, named my company after that, you know, nickname. And that's how the nickname came about, through Biggie, actually. He, he named it. That's incredible. So I would love for you to tell me, just name drop for, for the people in the audience that don't know some of the artists that you've worked with and some of the artists that you've discovered. So I worked with um, Diddy coming up through, um, you know, working with um, assisting Biggie's management. Um, I also worked with Mary J. Blige, worked with Jay-Z, worked with Discovered Foxy Brown, Discovered Shine. Um, you know, throughout the course of the years, mainly those artists that I, you know, really worked with really closely and, you know, helped develop in one way or, or another or help assist or help co-executive produce or manage. Um, so th those were the main artists that I've worked with um, in, the, in the late 90s going into the 2000s. So these are all the most famous worldwide, world-renowned names. You've obviously run into artists that didn't make it. You know, there's something special about the artists that do make it and yeah. as a music executive and now somebody in the hospitality business. It's your job to find out what is that it factor, you know, for for I actually was speaking with uh, Matt Plapp, who was a former guest on the show. He was talking to Guy Fieri and they were talking about storytelling. They were talking about, you know, why is it so important for restaurant owners, people in the hospitality business to tell their story, to use social media and all these different platforms that we have to share their story. And what Guy Fieri said was, you know, when you know the journey of the band, the music sounds different. Mm. When you know like the journey that. of the band, the music sounds different. When you know the story of the restaurant, the food tastes different. When mm. people come and they know your story, they come to Brooklyn Chop House, it hits different. Can yep. you talk about the, the correlation of the it factor? Yeah, that's, that's, that was a great statement. And that is so true because there's an essence in the brand. There's something that... Um, that helped created the brand within us, right? Um, within like myself, my partners, um, Stratus and David, like we all together, you know, come from a different journey, but that passion that we all have, you know, for business and for the, you know, the culinary arts and for entertainment and food and beverage, like we put it all together. And that was something that, you know, I, that that statement that guy, guy, guy said was, real right because it took a lot of um we took uh it took a lot of different um experiences for us to come up with brooklyn chop house and be here today so for me it's it wasn't just i arrived at brooklyn chop house yep. you know i came through the entertainment industry and from the entertainment industry i went to be a, being a franchisee of different concepts of papa john's of checkers of ihop presently you know i'm still a franchisee so for me you know i it, it's been a journey so when we came up with brooklyn chop house the concept um it was born out of all of these out of out of the out of the band right so it was born out of the journey so it was a natural progression that we went from you know i went from management to franchisee licensing to actually owning a brand, right? And now um, owning a brand that other people can share in and other, other people can invest in and build sub brands within my brand. So totally understand that concept, that, 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 that journey that we took. All of us together, you know, makes that Brooklyn Chop House brand work, all of our journeys. So I know it's probably almost impossible to describe that feeling, that vibration when you meet somebody, when you meet an artist, when you meet an entrepreneur, when you go, they get it. What is it in someone that you recognize? Because your job is to scout talent 
and you scout talent, I'm guessing the same way in the hospitality business as you did in the entertainment business. What is it about someone that you're looking for? So it's the, you know, the never quit attitude, the diligent, hardworking, entrepreneurial spirit, because a lot of us have that in common. It, it's not all wins, right? So it's wins and, and lots losses. Lots of losses. Yeah, lots of Jordan, losses. Jordan missed a lot of shots. Losses, <laughs> yeah, lots of losses. And through those losses are learning experiences, right? So yeah. if you didn't learn from your losses, then what was what was it all for? So we take that, you know, you know, and, and we brush ourselves off. We take the loss as, you know, is what it is. We keep going. We try again. We lose again. We try again. And you don't get here by winning all the time. No one won all the time. No one goes to bat and hit a home run all the time. It's about getting on base, right? It's, it's that on-base percentage. So if you could keep a higher on-base percentage and just hit the ball all the time, at some point, you're going to knock one out the park, yeah. right? You just got to keep staying on base. Keep Actually, you just got to keep getting to bat. <laughs> and then if you get to bat and you're good enough to hit the ball, right, then at some point, you, your consistency is going to show. So I look for that same energy in executives that I did look for artists, artists that wasn't willing to, willing to give up. None of these artists that I mentioned had hit after hit after hit after hit, right? It's all, it's all about just not giving up, um, staying true to yourself, um, having that determination to win, to want to win. And, you know, I, I look for that same energy in executives and my leadership team and my management team so that you know they can lead right so you lead by example so you're not always going to win but you, you got to show up right you have to work hard you have to follow the standard operating procedures to the best of your ability right and we have to be creative in the things that we do as well so i look for you know that that same you know energy in executives that i look for in artists can you bring me back to the dream? When when did this Brooklyn Trap House become a be, become actually something that you're like, is this really going to happen? Am I really so what, am I really going to be in Times Square with a with a with a restaurant in Times Square? Yeah, that that that's that's just amazing. <laughs> I'm I'm pinching myself every day at the opportunity. Um, so just to take you back, uh, you know, to to the beginning. Um, we had an opportunity to get, to get a space actually in Lower Manhattan first. Um, 150 Nassau Street is the original location. Um, with that said, um, I was it wasn't going to be a Brooklyn Chop House at first. It was going to be a different restaurant. So I end up giving I end up calling my my partner Dave and saying, "Hey, I have an idea for a restaurant." Um, he was like, "Let's go." You know, everything that you've been doing has been working out. So I'm in. Let's go. So we were working on a restaurant. Um, it was gonna be a Caribbean concept. And then I gave Stratus, who I knew and met from Philippe Chow, um, who I was a great customer of the brand and knew for 15 years. I said, hey, um, I, I need you to do a walkthrough on this concept that I'm thinking of in lower Manhattan. I haven't done anything in this area before. He was like, oh, you gotta be careful down there. It's kind of tricky, you know? It, 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 you know, the, the, the energy or the, the traffic dies early, right? So this is around 2000, early 2018, right? So he said, uh, I said, but just check it out. Come check it out. So he came and took a look at it. I gave him a walkthrough. He was like, oh, this is a nice building. This is a nice place. So it was a former restaurant. And I said, yeah, I'm just going to renovate it, you know, update it, you know, change the cosmetics and make it a, a little more high end. And this is the style that I'm looking for. He was like, oh, we should do a... Um, you know, this uh, Asian concept meets, uh, you know, um, a steakhouse. I, and I said, I like steakhouse because it's Wall Street. And I thought it would be really good for, you know, corporate to align, you know, I'll pay the rent on a 25,000 square foot building. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so we, we decided to do um, that first. I, I'm referring to the 150 Nassau first. Oh, gotcha. Got you. Then, got you. Got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah, then he, um, then we decided, you know what? I said that's a good idea, and then we came up with the concept. You know, I was back, I was deal, I was going back and forth with the concept of the first um, restaurant, the name. So I knew I wanted Brooklyn in it, and then we were playing with the name, and then we came up with Chop, and then Chop stands for Chop Sticks and Chop Steaks, 
So it made sense. So Brooklyn Chop House, and obviously it feels like a brand that's been around a long time. So we agreed on that name. And then, you know, Brooklyn Chop House was born. We ended up getting a lot of support from, you know, the the um, people in entertainment, um, the, the, the community, the people on Wall Street. So we, we, we really, really started to get, you know, get going. Then obviously COVID hit. And then once COVID hit, you know, we, we, everything was shut down. Um, it was a scary moment for everybody in the industry and, and the world, obviously. Most businesses were shut down. So at that point, uh, we just decided to start, you know, giving back, helping the first responders um, in that neighborhood. It ended up getting picked up by the media and it went viral. Then all of our vendors, partners saw it. So they started to donate um, cases of chicken, cases of rice, cases of vegetables. So we just, you know, just were helping because we really didn't know where we were going at that point, right? So we just we just decided to keep working, keep going. And then, you know, fortunately, fortunately enough, it ended up, um, um, we, get, we got the opportunity to open up outdoor. And once we opened up outdoor, um, we got a, a big show of support. And then the landlord, from Times Square came to actually dine there and saw what we were doing and said, hey, we have a, a space in Times Square. Wow. And, it, and it was um, pretty, you know, pretty scary at that moment. But at that time we said, you know what, let's take a chance to take a look at it. And then we did the deal. And then um, we renovated the location and then we opened about three months ago and it's been, you know, rocking ever since. So. We're blessed to be there. We we hire over a hundred people, so that's also a blessing. So we're excited about that. That is absolutely incredible. I mean, the fact that you guys went out on a limb, you were at you were you had a location, you were committed to the cause, you were helping, giving back during the pandemic. So many great restaurant operators understood our role in the pandemic was to to spread kindness to do what we do best which is give out hospitality through food to first responders um, but the fact that the landlord came and then brought you to times square i mean it was like it was meant to be and now a quick break from restaurant influencers to talk about our newest sponsor pop menu huge fans of what pop menu are doing we got to spend a lot of time with them at the national restaurant association in chicago spending time with the team to learn about all the digital hospitality tools that their company offers. Restaurants have been hit hard over the last few years, which means restaurant owners and staff have been working harder than ever. Trying to meet the demands of in-person hospitality can be very demanding, which is why we recommend Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering turns every restaurant phone call into an opportunity. It uses artificial intelligence to answer simple questions that are hanging up your phone lines, like, can I make a reservation? Where are you located? Do you still have ribs? And over 50% of restaurant guests are happy to have their questions answered by an automated system. Within the Pop Menu platform, you can customize answers for your restaurant, choose the voice your guest hears, which we recommend is your voice, and even send follow up links via text message. Pop Menu Answering picks up your phone 24 7, 365 days out of the year, allowing you and your team to focus on what matters most. Prevent lost customers and impress your guests with Pop Menu Answering. For a limited time, our listeners get $100 off your first month plus lock in one unchanging monthly rate at popmenu.com slash influencers. Go now to get $100 off your first month and learn more about Pop Menu's full collection of tools at popmenu.com slash influencers. And now back to the show. Can you bring us back to opening night? Oh, yeah, it was great. Um, so what we did was we did a soft opening um, where we had friends and family um, come and, you know, see the location. We That was our unveiling, um, for lack of better words. And um, it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling to actually see the food come out, um, see, the, see the smiles on people's faces. Uh, we invited some neighbors from Times Square. We invited the Times Square Alliance. They came. So we, we um, you know, we just invited a lot of the um, supporters and the people that been supporting the brand for a while. Um, so that was just a great feeling. And then uh, maybe two months later, we celebrated by having a grand opening um, um, hosted by Hennessy and Moet. 
um, and, M and Mary J. Blige, she came and um, helped us hoax and, and launch the brand. So it was a great night. Um, you know, we, 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 did, we did a formal affair, so it was a really great night. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, I think, you know, for restaurant owners, the people that listen to this show, if they've, if you've opened up a restaurant or you dream of opening up a restaurant, you don't realize that you have to run a marathon just to get the restaurant open. And oh then man, once, it's like, um, once you open it, you have you no realize, idea. That, realize the race no hasn't idea. even started. <laughs> once the, once you get the restaurant open, you realize that you haven't even started the race, that the marathon hasn't even started. Uh, so I'd love to talk about influence. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we put on the show, we talk about storytelling, the power of social media, the power of, of media, but can you talk about what's happened in your restaurant because of the stories that you've told, because of the career that you have, because of how great the brand is, how great the food is. I mean, you're literally having celebrities from all over the world come and dine with you. I mean, there's Cardi B and Offset coming and they're leaving a $1,400 tip on a $3,000 bill that literally gets picked up globally globally talking about your restaurant. We're talking about 327 million web impressions. And that was the first week that it happened. I'm sure it's much more after that. Can you talk about just the vibe that you've created and how this exponential storytelling is happening in your restaurant? Oh man, I mean, thanks to social media, thanks to Cardi and Offset who comes very come to the restaurant very often. Um, that was very generous of them what they did. Um, we, we didn't do it in any manner to get it picked up like that. I think, I just think it was a show of generosity that, you know, really, um, um, spiraled to let everyone know these beautiful people, um, that come here that support us did this. And, um, you know, um, I just want to shout, shout out to them, thank them. And then, you know, um, all the other, you know, artists that have been supporting, um, so many, so many, you know, I, I, so many to name, but yeah. specifically there's one that, you know, sticks in my mind. It was the night that Jamie Foxx came through. <laughs> that was amazing. It was such a surprise and a delight. I had met him um, a few years back, but he came through and his energy, it, his energy was just so great. He just started like, like singing and like talking and went live on Instagram actually. And said, live hey, he went from table to table. Bro, he went from table to table. <laughs> like, yo, I don't believe this restaurant is good. You gotta try the chicken sautés and the lettuce wraps and the salt and pepper, uh, lobster and the dumplings, the dumplings. They got these creative dumplings. You just gotta try everything. So he goes on live and he goes from table to table. Like, hey, I'm Jamie Fox. Say what's up. Everyone's going crazy. Like, am I really eating here on whatever night it was? And Jamie Fox is walking through the restaurant on live, right? They loved it. People lost their mind. Right? Yeah. People are so happy. One girl started crying when, when she saw Jamie Foxx. <laughs> so it, it, it was just amazing for him, you know, just to do that, that like, like the energy of the restaurant and then his energy together that night was just amazing. And then, you know, to have him do that, just like, I didn't ask him to do it. It was just, his energy was just great. So that was a moment too, that I think a lot of people that exposed the restaurants to a lot, a lot of our clientele and the fact that we have social media that can spread, that can influence, that can show people having a good time and not a celebrity just being stuffy in a corner. This guy's right. just having a great time, yes. right? Like, like there's no security following him. He's yeah. just in the restaurant free, going from table to table, talking. It's like, hey, Don Poo, here, get on here. Tell the people about Yuki <laughs> Chop House. I'm like, oh my God, this is like a commercial. It's like, this is like, like a Super Bowl but commercial but right now. But it's better. It's better than a commercial. I mean, those are the things that we talk about. We always tell people that listen to the show, anyone that follows our content, be the show, not the commercial. Everyone Correct. wants to think that we want a commercial about our brand. But what Jamie Foxx did, what Cardi B did, is that they were creating a show. They were literally documenting their real life experience in real time. There's no amount of money that a business owner can pay to have that right. kind of legendary status. I mean, the millions of followers that he has across social media, but it's even more powerful because all of the people, the woman that cried, she's going to talk about that for the rest of her life. For the rest of her life. That's a moment that she's going to remember forever right? and ever. And she's going to, and that's more important. And I agree. 
that's more important than a commercial which people see through. That was real. Yeah. yeah. Right? Real. That was a real moment. Real raw. That was great. So I'm going to I'm going to bring you back in time. I have an inside source. And what he told me was that um, it was the reason that you got into the restaurant business back in 2004. You can tell me if this is true or false. Um, he told me that it was because of Napster. You got terrified of Napster and it, it of course, <laughs> into the restaurant business. Is my is my source correct or false? <laughs> no, your source is, is pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Um, I'm going to put a little twist on it, uh, but it's pretty accurate. I mean, we we're going through a, a time where there was a lot of downloading and a lot of, um, you know, depth of music and sharing and file sharing. So when um, artists were releasing their albums, they were experiencing um, some of the music being leaked um, as a term that we used in the music business where other people got a hold of it, started copying and making either physical copies or file sharing and sending it out. And then, you, then you'll be like, the it takes a little bit away from the anticipation. Maybe the quality of the music might not be, have been as well um, as the mastered copy, but nonetheless, people were getting the music before the artist could put it out. Hence, the music was getting shared for free and the artists and the labels weren't benefiting from you know, the financial um, benefit from the album sales. So um, at that time, you know, I thought it was getting a little weird. I, obviously the music business figured it out, was going through a transition. Uh, we went from physical copies to digital, to from digital to streaming. So it went through this process, um, but I just decided to diversify at that point and started to get in, going into franchising. Just to diversify my portfolio a little bit, I was really heavily invested um, time and you know money-wise into um, the music business. So I decided, you know, to get into the food business, which is pretty much synonymous. You know, it's entertainment and food and and restaurants and hospitality. They're all pretty much synonymous with each other because obviously, as an executive, I was always you know entertaining people at restaurants having my meetings, going out with artists, discussing, you know, whatever business we had to discuss at those same restaurants that I said one day I would like to own something like this venue to then share with my relationships from the music business. Hopefully they could come and have that same experience that I used to get when I was an executive. So that was the whole, that was my mind frame when I decided to um, diversify into hospitality franchising hospitality and then um a higher end you know fine fine dining just in, on a higher level but a cool higher level right not just you know fine dining but you know cool fine dining so um what we like to you know call you know or, or the term that i've heard is like a club restaurant not really you know anyone dancing right yeah. but it's just a vibe right yeah. so you can listen to you know good music you know, it's good conversation, good networking, great ambiance. So all of those things lend itself to the, you know, Brooklyn Chop House per se and what in the brand we wanted to create. Absolutely. Yeah. The inside source was obviously Stratus Morfogan, who's been a guest yeah. on the show. Um, he just dropped book. he just he just dropped his book, uh, Be a Disruptor. We'll put a link in the show notes so you guys can can check that out. I'm sure uh, Brooklyn Chop House has got a lot of love in that book as well. Um, can you can Absolutely. you talk about I, I was listening to uh, the Breakfast Club. You were on there with Charlemagne and you were talking about the power of becoming a businessman and giving back to the black community, teaching them how to get into the franchise business. I mean, you're so well known for what you've done with the IHOP franchise in Brooklyn and what you did with Papa John's that you're literally getting name dropped in other songs that if you want to know about the franchise business, call Don Poo. Uh, that's why, is that, why is that so important to you to, to continue to not only invest in, into the community that you grew up in, but also teach other black entrepreneurs that there is a path for them? So, I mean, I mean, that's that, that's a twofold. I, I'll, I'll start with the first part. Um, it's really important to kind of um, show, first of all, just show them that it could be done. Um, um, show like teach them the path on how to get there, right? So a lot of the information, unfortunately, 
um, to get to own a franchise or to get to um, be qualified for a franchise, it's, um, it's very difficult. So I like to share information. Hopefully, you know, I'm working with, actually I'm working with IHOP now, right? We formed a committee um, and our, um, our intent is to, to bring in more minority franchisees into the brand, right? By, you know, maybe starting different programs and helping them because the, the biggest hurdle is the financial hurdle for the most part, right? So not just um, my peers, but um, for people that want to do it, but don't have the financial capability to get approved to do some of the concepts that you know, they think would work or they have a passion to do. So um, we're, we're trying to bridge that gap by creating funding, uh, creating programs to kind of offset some of those um, qualifications. Um, so that's, that's a big initiative of mine um, in, in, in partnership, obviously, with IHOP and IHOP's committee and the president of IHOP. They've definitely... Um, we're definitely talking about bringing more um, minorities into into franchise ownership. So that's very important to me that you know we 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 try to you know bridge that gap. So it was important to open up an IHOP in Brooklyn specifically because that's where I, I grew up, and I noticed that there was a void. Um, of IHOPs in Brooklyn. So in the in in the area I grew up in, there was always one in Canarsie, Brooklyn that I grew up on, but there was only one for like, you know, 20 something years. So I felt that there was a void. So, you know, we applied, we got the opportunity, we, we acquired the development rights to develop several restaurants in the Brooklyn area. But I found as a kid, we would always either go there, we'd go to um, Long Island or New Jersey, we'd go out of the community. So I said, let's bring more of the things that we love back into the community. And then we hire people within the community to execute the concept that, you know, we have grown to love. So that was important for me to one, open up in the community and two, hire people from, from within the community so that they could have, we could create job opportunities for people and their families and also inspire people that, you know, in the community that you know we could own these you know franchise concepts as well so that's first step and then the second step is to you know teach them and show them how to get to that opportunity so we try to teach restaurant owners and people in the hospitality business how important it is to think beyond a standard restaurant profit and loss statement and to do things differently, which is why we do media, which is why we talk about consumer packaged goods. I know you guys have a line that you've partnered with Patty LaBelle. You're going to be rolling out consumer packaged goods um, in Walmarts. Can you tell us about why and how is it going to happen? Oh, wow. That's that. That was a blessing. Um, Patty LaBelle. Um, came to the restaurant. Um, shout out to my guy, Charles Soup. Um, he's actually um, partners with Patty LaBelle on her line that became super successful with Walmart. So oh. ha again, having those entertainment relationships, um, we thought we, we knew that Brooklyn Chap House, you know, our um, meal solutions um, were great. And we decided, we said, hey, Let's think about if we can put these dumplings, um, we could do frozen dumplings and put them in a supermarket. And two, we could do meal solutions from some of our key and some of our most popular menu items and also go to um, you know market with those as frozen foods. So we had the opportunity to meet with Patty, who's really like her desserts took off, her meal solutions took off. Patty LaBelle brands are just, it's just huge. I'm just so happy for her. Um, so we all decided to partner together to, to launch Brooklyn Chop House Frozen Foods through her, you know, um, partnership with Walmart. And we all partnered together and hopefully it'll be in restaurants. Uh, 2022, early 2023. Amazing. So, we feel good about that. That was a that was a blessing, and you know, just shout out to Patty Labelle for 
you know, just, you know, joining with us to, to put Brooklyn Chop House in supermarkets. That's super exciting. So people that listen to this show, one of the things, my grandfather, he was uh, an immigrant from Bulgaria, a farm boy. He taught me to stay curious, to get involved and to ask for help. And it's great to listen to a show. It's great to consume content. If you're watching on entrepreneur.com, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, but another thing is to get involved, to actually do the work. So we put on a clubhouse call on the audio app clubhouse every Wednesday, every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And what I like to do is people that support this show, I give them a shout out. So today's shout out's going to Phyllis Williams Strotter. Um, she is the ghetto country brand mother. She is an unbelievable follow on all platforms. She comes on stage. She brings the fire. I've actually interviewed her on the podcast, Digital Hospitality. But one of the things she taught me was to lean into your crazy. That is the problem with business owners is that they do not lean into their crazy when they're creating content. They want to have this corporate perfect perception of who they are, what their restaurant is, what their product is. And what you really need to do is lean into your vibe of who you are and who your truth is. For you, for the man, for Don Poo, what is your truth? What is your vibe? What gets you fired up? Oh, man, I, just, I think it's the, I think it's just the opportunity to, you know, this, this platform has given me an opportunity just to create more, you know, more opportunity for more people, right? So that kind of, because at the end of the day, if you don't have, it's it's when opportunity, it's when, you know, your finances meet the opportunity is when usually you can have the most success. So in giving back opportunity to other people with, especially with Brooklyn Dumpling Shop franchise concept, it's an opportunity now for, young entrepreneurs all over, young or older entrepreneurs, right, all over to get an opportunity to own their own business um, okay. with a concept that we think and we believe that will do amazing and give, give a re amazing return on investment, hopefully. So that's really what, you know, and, 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 and that's really what drives me and really what, you know, makes me lean into you know, working and getting up every day just to inspire others to also have that entrepreneurial spirit and to keep going. And, and again, the, the crate, like we come up with the talk, when, when you say crazy, we come up with these crazy ideas. We don't know whether it's going to win or lose. Yeah. Right? We could lose our shirt. Yeah. But, you know, when we create something and, you know, that magic happens, that's, you know, that's really kind of like, you, and then you lean into your crazy, right? Once the magic happens. That's right. So anybody that's listening to this, you can always reach out to me. It's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. That's on TikTok. That's on Instagram. That's on LinkedIn. That's on Twitter. Um, we want to hear your stories. We want, no matter where you are on earth, um, your village, your community, you matter. And for us, join us on Clubhouse, come up on stage, share your story. You never know, you could be featured on entrepreneur.com cover the same way Don Poo is, is, is legendary, legendary. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave you um, with, with one of my favorite quotes. It's from a famous, uh, great philosopher. And it goes by the name of Winnie the Pooh. As we're gonna be friends forever, just you wait and see. So Don Poo, uh, I'm grateful for you. Um, you're a friend forever. I can't wait to make it to Times Square with my uh, with my family to come and see see what you guys have built. I can't wait to see what you keep building. Are there any parting words you want to say to the uh, hospitality professional or restaurant professional that's listening to this show? Oh, absolutely. Just um, just stay creative. Um, you know, the industry went through a really um, scary moment for um, a second, a couple of years ago. But, um, you know, those that stayed strong, stayed diligent, um, we, we were able to weather the storm. So just stay strong. I know there's other people out there that, you know, are on that comeback as well. So just, you know, I'm wishing them well, you know, and any any support that we could give, we're there, you know, for, you know, any any restaurant. So, and we know, you know, owning your own business is not easy restaurant specifically has a high failure rate. So anything, any advice that I could offer and anything that I could do, I'm here for the community. 
Appreciate you. So we're going to put links in the show notes. Please follow Don Pooh Music. Please follow Brooklyn Chop House. Please follow Brooklyn Dumpling Shop. Um, we're going to put links in there. But we we can't thank you enough for your time. We're grateful. We can't wait to see what you build next. And uh, if you ever need anything from us, um, we're here for you and your family. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poon Kinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about toast, you implemented toast, you did a toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. Be sure to check out toast.